Welcome to another Lumion 8 live stream tutorial, guys. This is Chris Walton from C Walton Design. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover hyperlight and animation in Lumion 8. One of my favorite things they finally added to the animation abilities. Before, this was stuck to um, stills, but luckily in 8, we can now do this on our videos. And this is such a crucial development because Hyperlight was one of the best things Lumion released um, back in version 5, I believe. So, Hyperlight's come a long way. And so now we have an animation. So let me go ahead and jump into a scene and let's start playing around with it. So, here's an example scene here. This is Villa Cabrera. And I just went ahead and kind of lit up a scene in here. And I'm going to show an example a little bit later about how this, how much this effect, um, how much it increases our ability to see um, lighting and interiors. And if we take a look at this, make it nighttime, like really nighttime. You start to see the roof is all black. And of course, in real life, light would bounce and light up, illuminate the roof. Or the ceiling and the rest of the room quite a bit but since we're not ray tracing and Lumion's a real-time <clears throat> real-time render engine that's something it struggles with and hyperlight was their way of dealing with that so first off let's go over what's kind of changed before if you've noticed if you're if you're coming from non Lumion 8 hyperlight has come used to be right here in this corner and they moved it now as an effect, which um, which is great. That's definitely where it ought to be. You'll notice that when you when you use one of these templates, like say realistic, hyperlight's definitely the one, one of the ones that's added by default for, for a lot of good reasons. So let's go ahead and come in here and show off the it's right here. And there's the light and shadow right next to skylight and global illumination. Hyperlight is right here. And it is a slider like it once was. The big difference from before, though, is it used to go from 0 to 200. But now it goes from 0 to 100. But notice it's it's kind of, um, how to explain it? It's, it's kind of logarithmic or exponential, whereas halfway is like, I don't know, 25 and 100 is a hundred is full so it like speeds up faster and faster I think that's kinda how the effect works so let's do a quick test to see in an animation so here we are in an animation I'm able to add hyperlight there is a caveat though hyperlight you, you know, it used to go from 0 to 200. Now it still goes to 0 to 100. Um, and 100 is pretty strong in a still. It, it so, you know, a lot, a lot of times I bump it up high, but sometimes it is overbearing. It, it all depends on the scene and how much light's already in there. <clears throat> and um, so animation, it seems that the only reason it, they didn't seem to have hyperlight in the animation before is because of render speed. So I feel like it looks like they they've made a little bit of a sacrifice where in the hyperlight for animation is a little more toned down than hyperlight for still. But it's that's fine. That it still does a, a definitely good enough job that it that adds a lot of benefit to us without it really doesn't add too much render time either. Adding hyperlight to animations is I don't know, it was like an extra 20 or 30 percent it really wasn't that much <coughs> excuse me guys apologize having a cold I'm getting through this but really quickly I'm going to show you what happens when we render with hyperlight off in real time here so I just have it at zero and the way I'm going to test this out is I'm going to go to image sequence so image sequence is where you would render out the frames but in this case, I'm just going to tell it to render one frame for speed. We'll go ahead and do full stars, 1080. So that was my previous test to make sure this works out the way I want. So this one's going to be no hyperlight. And it's going to give it a, another name because it's part of a sequence. Oops. No HF. 
So that's how Lumion would normally be. That's how it always been before in animation. We couldn't add hyperlight before. So now, let's turn hyperlight all the way up. Do the same thing when this one's going to say hyperlight. So you start to see it right there on the edges. It's not a lot. And this isn't the really this really isn't the best example. And real realistically I would have more lights around. I'm just trying to show it off the best, you know, easiest way possible. But there is a difference. We can kind of compare those two here. Oops, let's see. So there's no hyperlight in hyperlight. So I'll have a better example soon. But what I wanted to show off too, that's a video, my video I'm going to show off a little later, is hyperlight, I'm going to show what hyperlight full for still is. The, the hyperlight for still animations, or sorry, still renderings, is still the best and most powerful. So if we go to current shot, this switch is, you'll notice here, <clears throat> that if we have the options here, small HD, full HD, quad HD, 4K, that means that Lumion is using its animation render engine. It renders it differently than it does stills. When we go to current shot, this is a still. Notice that we have email, desktop, print, and poster. So uh, just understand that this is something that cannot be rendered in an animation in a sequence. Obviously, we can't render 8K animations yet. We, we just got 4K. I can't even imagine how long that would take to render, but this is the still rendering setup. So I'm going to go. I'm just gonna do right here. I'm not. Let's see. Let's get the same location, and I'm gonna call this one Super Hyperlight. You'll see why. So that's a pretty big difference. You know, maybe in the future they'll be able to bump it up a little bit more. I'm just glad we have it. And it, it definitely makes a big difference in a lot of ways. And this probably does take up quite a bit more time. But just so you're aware, you can kind of compare. Here's Hyperlight, and this is like still Hyperlight. You know, it's that's at max. Maybe if we toned it down, I think it might even be using a different engine or different way of, of calculating it out. Maybe if I gone down to like 25 or something and did that still version here on current shot. There you go. A little bit less, but it's still it's still doing it's still calculating it in a certain way. That's really really doing some incredible things here. But for animations, it's enough and I've noticed a huge difference in quality, especially when things are lit up or things in the evening or in, or in the interior. There's another thing you could do. It's the global illumination effect. This is kind of a... This effect is uh, very, very taxing. And I, I'm not sure if it needs an update or something. It's... There's definitely some limitations with it, but as you can see, we can get a similar result and render it in animation, but it's going to cost you time. So maybe if you absolutely need that kind of real overbright effect at night, then you can try the global illumination still and play with that. You just can't have anything move. Nothing can move or you get flickering in an animation. So another thing to take into account is hyperlight doesn't just bounce to kind of light or mimic light bouncing everywhere in this night shot. It also just it makes colors and textures um, really um, really get more vivid and pop. So I'm going to go on and show um, my example I have here. So this is this is what I rendered, and so that white bar is turning it on. So on the left is hyperlight on. And you can definitely see there's a, there's a difference there. In this example, it wasn't that great of an example. And here I'm just fading in between. That's what I'm going to do in each of these clips. Use that bar, and this is me kind of fading in and out so you can get a really 
good side-by-side -side example. This one was a really good one, just a simple light. You could definitely see that little bit of extra detail. And you know what, in real life, you'd add more lighting. You'd brighten up the sky and it would really pop a little bit more. I'm just trying to show like the raw hyperlight effect. So here's one of those examples of it kind of really vividing the colors. Really, like, all the furniture just looks excellent. But one thing you'll notice there, too, is look at his shadow. His shadow there is, uh... His shadow is still. I don't explain it. So, that's actually a completely different effect that I captured without thinking about it with him here. That was this effect. So, kind of a side note when you do when you work with um, lights here, spotlights. This is our light. It's set to static, and this is the resolution of the uh, shadow. If you went to dynamic, it would actually record every time he moves. Just something to be aware of. Like this caught me off guard. This guy moves so much that. Lumion, what it'll do to save render time is it'll basically bake one shadow on there and then not render it again for speed. So obviously when you have moving people, that's something what to watch out for. Completely different separate topic than Hyperlight, but it, it popped up right there. And so yeah, there's I have another example I posted online where I took my um white interior, which is happened to be one of my most viewed videos, I guess. Where I was testing out, um, <laughs> where I was testing out Lumion 5's render ability with Hyperlight and some things, uh, and I went ahead and did a similar test during the day and with with Hyperlight. So I recommend checking that one out too and play with play around with it yourself. Remember, you can test that out on a video by rendering out that one frame. So entire clip, obviously, entire entire clip. You'd have to wait for the whole thing to finish to see any results. Current shot is a still rendering inside of the in, of the uh, movie space, so that's rendering it differently. That's where you get the super hyper light and image sequence. As long as you set this one to one, this is where you can test it out really quickly. How hyper light works, how it'll look before rendering everything. So I recommend doing that. Um. It almost sounds like I'm a little negative on Hyperlight. I'm, I, I just, it just, I'm just making sure you understand that it's not exactly the same as it is, but it is still very useful, and they did it for our, to save our render times. I mean, maybe, maybe the developer saw that the Hyperlight on full was gonna, you know, increase render times by like five times and ten times. I don't know, and so they're just trying to make find that balance, and maybe they'll play with it later. But what we have now works, and it's still very advantageous. You see it in a lot of the Lumion 8 renderings you see out there. Skylight's a big one of them, and the shadow quality is definitely a big thing. But Hyperlight is definitely in there, and it's definitely anything that's lit up. Like I said, it doesn't just kind of make things light up a little bit better and kind of you know simulate a global illumination effect, even a ray tracing effect. It also just really kind of livens up colors and makes things pop a little bit better. As a lot of realism, especially I've noticed to the people. I've seen some shots, and this is a bad shot of him right now, but I've seen some I've seen some shots of the people in here with hyperlight, and it just it makes them look really looks to look real better than definitely without it. So that's my coverage of hyperlight in Lumion 8. Try it, play with it. Um, you don't have to just shoot it at a hundred like I have it here. Play around with different levels. I don't think there was any correlation with this level and render speed, but don't quote me on that. And I think I tested that. And yeah, that'll cover it for this tutorial. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And subscribe to this channel if you'd like more content like this. Forgive me for uh, my uh, for being sick, trying to finish up these videos and getting them out to you. There's only there's plenty more tutorials I have coming, and if you have any other ideas, please leave them in the uh, leave them in the comments as well. I have a lot more to work on. All right, thanks for watching. And until next time, guys.